You know what I miss? The days when every cartoon had some crappy tie-in video game. Whatever happened to these, man? Back when I was a kid, I spent so much of my summer vacations playing this junk. If SpongeBob wasn't on TV, I'd just boot up Revenge of the Flying Dutchman and everything was fine. Yeah, I, I didn't have Battle for Bikini Bottom. But these days, licensed cartoon games are pretty few and far between. Wait a minute. Cartoons? Nostalgic memories of summer vacation? That can only mean one thing. That's right, it's time for Phineas and Ferb, the Disney Channel cartoon about kids violating all sorts of construction laws and aquatic mammals that fight evil. You guys already know this stuff. This cartoon just becomes more and more classic with every passing year, even though it's technically been over since 2015. And last year, I made a video called Pretending Phineas and Ferb Isn't Over, where I took a look at a bunch of random Phineas and Ferb stuff to fill the void. Toys, music, other shows entirely, and most importantly, video games. Yeah. There are Phineas and Ferb video games. Quite a few, actually. And I can't think of a better way to honor a show all about making the most of your summer break and not spending all day playing video games by sitting inside and spending all day playing video games. So today, I'm checking out every Phineas and Ferb video game that I have. Just whatever Phineas and Ferb games I could find sitting around. I think I have them all. But first, check this out. The sponsor of this video sent me a slingshot. Thank you, Bespoke Post. That's right, today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. These guys are a subscription box service that sends you boxes of cool stuff from under the radar brands every single month. Yes, that includes slingshots. Each month, these guys bring you new stuff based on a preference quiz you take when you sign up. There's outdoor gear, clothes, home goods, kitchen goods, live oysters, and more. Personally, I got myself the field box, which got me the slingshot, seed ball ammo for said slingshot, this awesome saw knife, and and a moisturizing hand balm. The concentrate box, which was headlined by this sick cold brew coffee maker, but also came with this concrete desk set and a little bottle of bitters. And lastly, the weekender box, which got me this huge freaking satchel. Perfect for packing up your slingshot, your saw knife, your camera, your vintage electric guitar pedals from the 70s, your entire collection of the original Edgar and Ellen book series, you know, anything you need. Signing up is free. There's new stuff being added every month. You can preview your box before it ships to decide if you wanna keep it, swap it out, or skip that month entirely, and every box has about $70 in value. But trust me, you ain't gonna be paying that much. In fact, if you click the top link in this video's description and use the promo code FOF20 at checkout, you can get your first box for 20% off. That's bespokepost.com slash FOF20 and use code FOAF20 at checkout for 20% off your first box or just click the link in the description. Major thanks to Bespoke Post for sponsoring, and now, let's get back to Phineas and Ferb. We got about, uh, six games to look at today, and I think the best place to start with Phineas and Ferb games is, well, Phineas and Ferb, the video game. This little Nintendo DS game came out way back in 2009 and is, as far as I can tell, the first proper Phineas and Ferb video game. And it is not good is not good. Phineas and Ferb is what I can only really call a DS game. I mean, yeah, duh, hear me out. The game starts, as you'd expect, with Phineas and Ferb under that same old tree thinking about what they want to do that day. Shocker, they do the roller coaster thing again. So we control Phineas and Ferb as they run around and collect junk to build their coaster. Sounds simple enough, but God, almost every single thing you do requires some kind of gimmicky touchscreen gimmick, I may, maybe I should rewrite that. Draw a circle to dig through the trash. Swipe up to reach a ladder. Tap the buttons to climb the ladder. Draw, swipe, tap, draw, swipe, tap. It's the majority of the game. But at the same time, the basics of just like running and jumping, you still use the regular buttons. So you're constantly swapping between the buttons and the stylus. And even as someone who grew up on the DS, this kind of control scheme is really annoying. It's games like these that led to so many DS styluses getting lost back in the day. But in terms of recreating the Phineas and Ferb vibe, it's mostly there. It's jaggedy and weird, but it does look the part. The setup is exactly what you'd expect, and the characters are all playing their parts. Candace shows up every now and then, and the game turns into bad Pac-Man. You play as Perry the Platypus sometime near the end. All the side characters show up, so yeah, everything's kinda here and accounted for. There's no voice acting, which, okay, fair, it's an old DS game. But the biggest failure here is the music. 
is pretty bad. Straight up, it sounds like bad Super Nintendo music from the 90s. If you have nostalgia for this game, I can understand that. I just don't think it's for me. It's pretty repetitive, just running around, doing random touchscreen mini games and building more and more elaborate stuff. Oh, actually, I forgot. You can actually ride the roller coasters you build. Heck, if you get enough speed, you can even go into space. You know, like the show. And you know, that actually sounds really fun. Let's give that a shot. I'm gonna play a different game now. And funnily enough, next up is another DS game, Phineas and Ferb Ride Again. It is a sequel to the first game released only a year later. So I don't know, maybe it'll be better. Well, first impressions are this is the exact same game. I mean, everything looks and sounds identical, which, you know, makes sense. The team probably only had a few months to put it all together, but there are some improvements here. There's more chances to play as other characters. The music at least tries to feel more like Phineas and Ferb, but most importantly, the controls. Uh, pretty much all the touchscreen junk has been restricted to just the building minigames, which makes the platforming flow a lot better. It, nerd talk, nerd talk, nerd talk. Basically, the game's more focused, less annoying to play, and I like it more. Plus, Candace dies? So, the Phineas and Ferb DS series. Honestly, I don't love them. They're okay, I guess. But I don't feel like I've had a real Phineas and Ferb experience after playing them. Like I said, the music's off, there's no voice acting, the gameplay at its best is still not great. I'm looking for a game that feels built from the ground up to recreate the Phineas and Ferb vibe. These feel like generic kids games wearing a Phineas and Ferb skin. Though, to be fair, at the time of writing this, I haven't quite finished them. I really tried to beat all the games in this video, but I was running low on time. So maybe I'll beat the games while I'm editing this video and tell you if my opinions changed right now. No. Great, moving on. So our first game was from 2009, the second from 2010, and believe it or not, we got another Phineas and Ferb game just a year later in 2011. Technically too. This was the year of Phineas and Ferb's big Disney Channel original movie, Across the Second Dimension. So naturally, we got some tie-in games of the same name. Phineas and Ferb Across the Second Dimension for PlayStation 3 and Wii, and handheld versions for the PSP and DS. For the console game, I've got the Wii version. They're the same thing. But hey, I actually managed to get a sealed copy of this one. The Wii is basically a retro game console at this point, so having a brand new sealed Wii game is really cool no matter what. So this game's weird. Usually these kind of movie tie-in games follow the plot of the movie basically beat for beat. But this game doesn't do that. You boot the game up, press start, and the first thing you get is a music video in crisp DVD quality set to a song that literally explains the plot of the entire movie, which is all about Phineas and Ferb getting trapped in another dimension where Dr. Doofenshmirtz rules the entire tri-state area. And of course, they gotta save the day and get back home. And the game is technically about the same thing, but it doesn't follow any of the movie's actual events. See, about two thirds of the way through the movie, there's this montage of the gang hopping from dimension to dimension. It's mainly just there for some fun after some of the more intense scenes in the movie, but no joke, the entire game takes place inside that montage, just following Phineas and Ferb through a bunch of different dimensions that never show up in the movie. There's a dimension where everything's covered in gelatin, there's a balloon dimension, there's a dimension based on old black and white cartoons, gnome world. The game really expects you to have seen the movie in order to follow what's going on. On, which is just kind of weird. I mean, it's not like it's saving you spoilers or anything. They spoil everything in the first cutscene. But yeah, Across the Second Dimension starts about 55 minutes into the movie and follows Phineas and Ferb through a bunch of different dimensions as they try to stop Doofenshmirtz, build crazy inventions, and fight an army of robots. Yeah. You heard me, we got combat this time. Phineas and Ferb can and will kill. The main gameplay of this one is running around, shooting robots and platforming. And it's not that bad. It controls well, it's nice and colorful, and there's even some flying levels for a bit of variety. I'm kind of digging this one so far. And that shouldn't surprise me because this was made by High Impact Games. Before Phineas and Ferb, these guys mainly worked on the PSP Ratchet and Clank games. If you don't know, Ratchet and Clank is like my favorite game series of all time. I love these games. And the PSP game, Size Matters, is one of my favorite handheld games ever. A full-fledged console quality Ratchet and Clank game on the go, I love it. And you can see a lot of that Ratchet and Clank influence in Across the Second Dimension. I mean, platforming through different worlds, shooting robots with wacky guns, collecting tiny metal scraps. This is a Ratchet and Clank game. But despite that, I still can't say this game is anything more than decent. See, kids games in the early 2010s had a little something I call 
Skylanders disease? I'm sure you know, but Skylanders was a kid's game built for co-op multiplayer that focused on cartoon characters slowly traveling through really long stages, fighting wave after wave of enemies, all from this kind of bird's eye view perspective. That game made all the money in the world, so pretty much every kid's game that decade became a Skylanders. Heck, even Ratchet and Clank got in on the action with probably the worst game in the series. It's a gameplay formula that I can smell a mile away, and it's just not my thing. It can be done well, but in my experience, it just takes a fun idea and makes it slow and boring real quick. And this Phineas and Ferb take on the formula, while better than some of the other games I've played today, was overall just okay as a game. Yeah, if you're looking for the most engaging and well-designed game in the world, yeah, this isn't it. But if you're not looking for a super great game and just want something with that Phineas and Ferb energy, Across the Second Dimension is actually really good. The game's got new cutscenes fully voiced by the original cast, there's unlockable characters, and like I said, the whole game is basically a cut side plot from the movie. That's really cool. Heck, that music video montage at the start of the game? That song's not in the movie. I think they made it exclusively for this game, and it's just as good, if not better, than most of the songs that are in the actual movie. You can really tell that there was serious effort put into making this THE Phineas and Ferb game, and it shows. And even if it's not my genre, even if it didn't blow me away, I really respect that. This game's alright. The DS version's completely different. So yeah, every version of Across the Second Dimension is the exact same game, except the DS one. One of the most innovative, cutting-edge consoles of its time, can't handle no world. So the DS version was made by much different people for a much different system, leading to a much different game. Does the word much sound weird to you now? And honestly, I like it. It's basically the same setup as the console version, hopping from dimension to dimension, shooting robots and jumping on stuff, but it streamlines everything down to a more focused single player experience. The console version just kind of stares at me wondering why I'm not playing with a friend. I don't have those! But yeah, second dimension on DS surprised me. The levels all have completely different themes, plus they're shorter, broken up into more bite-sized pieces on a world map that definitely wasn't completely and utterly ripped off from New Super Mario Brothers. You can swap between playing as Phineas, Ferb, and Perry at any time. You can ride that giant robot dog. It, this game ditches the Skylanders approach and is just a regular 3D platformer now. And I dig it. Like, if Phineas and Ferb had existed in the 90s, this is the game they would have had on PlayStation. And I mean that in the best way. Of course, it's not perfect. We still got those touchscreen minigames to deal with, and overall the game isn't amazing. But compared to the other games we've looked at, I probably had the most fun with this one. All things considered, if you're looking for games that really offer that Phineas and Ferb experience, I don't think you can go wrong with either version of this game. But here is where the fun stops. We had the DS games, which were kind of bad, but charmingly nostalgic. We had Across the Second Dimension, which was legit pretty good. But now we have Phineas and Ferb, Quest for Cool Stuff. I, uh, I, I didn't have the box for this one. <laughs> We've jumped ahead a bit to the year 2013, and we're on the Xbox 360 now. So timeline-wise, we're getting pretty close to the end of Phineas and Ferb's original TV run. And I guess at this point, they just gave up on the games. Okay, look, I'm not trying to be mean, but I played this whole game, start to finish, and I just have no idea why it exists. It was a complete and utter slog to get through. Okay, so the setup this time around is that Phineas and Ferb want to build a museum full of cool stuff. Go! This is the first game we've looked at that is purely a 2D side-scroller kind of game. And instead of playing as just Phineas and Ferb, you play as Phineas and Ferb inside this weird looking mech with a giant drill attached to it. Sounds cool, is lame. Every level feels exactly the same. It's slow, there's never any challenge. You can play as Perry, but it's the exact same thing. There's these water levels that are horrible, and there's basically no story or sense of progression in the slightest. For real, I played for a couple hours and the game just stopped. Like, full on, their mom came home, everything they built disappeared, standard end of the episode bop stuff. I didn't even like the game, and even I was sitting there like, Wait, that's it? <laughs> so yeah, the gameplay's not great. In terms of giving the Phineas and Ferb experience, it's not the worst. It basically reuses all the assets from across the second dimension and aims to be more of a basic single episode of the show kind of thing. The music is fine, but it's mostly just reused songs from the show, which is cheating. But I don't know, man. Everything in this game is so weird and lifeless that it kind of just feels like a hazy fever dream. Basically, any strengths this game has in its presentation, it loses with its gameplay. There's a 3DS version, but I tried it. It's the same game. There's nothing different. You're way better off with a 
across the second dimension. But with that, we've only got one more game to look at today. A game that I completely forgot existed until I started writing this video, Phineas and Ferb Day of Doofenshmirtz, released in 2015 exclusively for the PlayStation Vita. Let me say that again. This game is a PlayStation Vita exclusive. No wonder I forgot about it. For those of you who don't know, the PS Vita was PlayStation's follow-up to the PSP back in 2012. It didn't get a lot of support, it never really caught on, but I love this thing. It's basically a portable PS3, but when I found out there was a Phineas and Ferb game on this thing, I realized there was gonna be a problem. You can't record gameplay footage straight from a Vita, which makes it kinda hard to talk about Vita games in a video. Nah, for that, you have to have the PlayStation TV. Yeah, we're getting real obscure now. This thing is basically a Vita, but without the screen. Or speakers or buttons, or basically anything that makes it a handheld console. It's just a Vita you hook into your TV, which makes it the only legitimate way to record good gameplay footage of Vita games. Unfortunately, these things flopped hard when they were released, which means they are not cheap to get today. So I forked over $500 for this fossil just to play Day of Doofenshmirtz, and this game's not compatible with PlayStation TV. <sighs> Fine, you know what? Screw it, we're just gonna recreate it, here. Phineas and Ferb Day of Doofenshmirtz is a worse version of Across the Second Dimension. You're still Phineas and Ferb, you're still shooting robots, and you're still using basically the same guns as before. There are some control differences, but yeah, this is kinda just a rehash of Across the Second Dimension, even reusing the character models again. So yeah, the game looks and plays fine, but that's kinda it. Of all the games we've looked at, this one feels the most cheap to me. The cutscenes are just comic panels, there's no voice acting this time, Phineas makes this really generic boing sound effect when he jumps and it annoys me. All things considered, it's really bland, it's kinda cheap, and I just don't think it's worth delving much deeper into. I mean really, even if this game was great, the best, most faithful Phineas and Ferb game ever, who in their right mind is gonna go out of their way to drop hundreds of dollars on discontinued game systems just to play a Phineas and Ferb game? Oh, wait.